Hey guys, it's Jasmine. Welcome back to part two of my haunted set video. If you didn't see part one, I'm gonna go ahead and send a, put a link in the description box. That way you can click on that and watch that first so this makes a little bit more sense. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The next movie I'm gonna be talking about is The Innkeepers. This is one movie I've never seen, but I think I'm going to now that I read about some of the creepy things that happened on set. So even though most of this happened at the hotel and not on set, I still think that it's a little coincidental. Doors would just open and close by themselves. TVs would just turn on and off. Radios would turn on and off. Lights would constantly burn out. Everyone from the cast and crew ended up having very creepy, vivid dreams every single night of filming. And Sarah Payton, who played Claire, felt like there was someone in the room whenever she would wake up in the middle of the night. Now this one gives me a freaking heebie-jeebies. This one really kind of freaks me out. I just feel like there's so much that goes into it that is it coincidental. I don't know. I watched this movie when I was pregnant and it terrified me. What we're going to be talking about is Rosemary's Baby. Now this is a very old movie. I want to say it's in black and white. I don't remember. But um, it's such a good movie. I was hooked on it and then I was thoroughly freaked out. So I'm going to go ahead and read you a quote that the producer William Castle said about the movie set. The story of Rosemary's Baby was happening in real life. Witches, all of them, were casting their spell and I was becoming one of the principal players. And that comment kind of freaks me out because it's about witchcraft and almost made me wonder like are we talking about the Illuminati here? Like what are we, wh why did he say that? That's just a bizarre thing to say about a movie set. So let's see what else happened. So the film is a Roman Polanski movie and you may recognize that because of something that happened to him a year later. The movie is about a pregnant woman who believes that there's a cult that's trying to do a ritual on her baby. Now Roman Polanski was killed in a ritualistic way by Charles Manson and his cult. And what they did is they killed Roman and his wife and they ended up stabbing her in the stomach and killing her baby. Now this, it gets weirder. Charles Manson called his ritualistic killings Helter Skelter. Now Helter Skelter is a Beatles song. Now John Lennon, who was the singer in the Beatles, was shot and killed in front of the hotel that they used as the outside shots of the building of Rosemary's Baby. Does that make sense? Now obviously this could all just be a coincidence. It could have been Charles Manson's thinking since this all happened a year after the movie was released. So he had a whole year to watch the movie and to get this crazy idea because you, we all know he was a little kooky. Now here's the other part that I think is a little weird. The movie's composer died of a blood clot going into his brain and that's how one of the characters in the movie died. William Castle ended up receiving death threats from random people saying that when he made that movie he was more or less releasing a he released an evil that could never be returned. He ended up needing surgery for a urinary blockage. And during the surgery, in his sleep, he yelled, Rosemary, for God's sakes, drop the knife. And that is a quote from the movie. The next one we're gonna talk about is the possession. Lights exploded multiple times on the set of the possession. There would be no doors, no windows, and no fans on, and there would just be sudden gusts of wind that would just sweep through the set. A couple days after filming, they went ahead and put all of the props into storage in case they had to take it, in case they had to film any retakes. And that specific storage closet started on fire, and when they investigated it, they couldn't figure out what the cause of the fire was. There was no faulty wiring, there was no arson, there was nothing that could have caused the fire, but all of their props burned to the ground. The next movie we're gonna talk about is The Ghost of Goodnight Lane. So this is an interesting one. This is a movie that he made based off of weird things that happened at his film studio. So it's pretty much a movie about a haunted set that's about a real haunted set. Does that make sense? It's, it's kind of like a little bit of a mind Mind screw, if you get what I'm saying. It's all based off of his set, Media World Studios in Texas. 
five deaths occurred on set. Staff and visitors will will see an unknown male on set. Heavy equipment will just suddenly move on its own. One person even claimed to be slapped across the face by an invisible entity. In 2010, paranormal investigators went to the set, performed their studies, and came back with EVP evidence that the set is indeed haunted. And then while he was filming the video on the haunted set, about the haunted set, the haunted things kept happening. The next movie we're going to talk about is Ghost. The one with Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore, Webby Goldberg, that one. And you would think if it was, since I don't, I wouldn't consider that a creepy movie, but creepy stuff kind of happened on that set. So it was filmed at um, Paramount Stage 19, which actors and workers have actually nicknamed Paranormal Paramount 19. So security guards will witness a sketchy looking dude walking around and when they go to confront him he'll just smile at them and he'll walk through a wall. Others have felt things kind of brush their back but nobody's there. There's lights that are constantly turning on and off. All of the film equipment is always getting all messed up. Heather O'Rourke, Heather O'Rourke, I can't say that word, um, is apparently she's one of the girls that haunts the movie set. She played in Happy Days and she played the little girl that says they're here in um, the Poltergeist movie. She's, she apparently haunts the set. Sometimes people will hear her running up and down on the catwalk that's above the stage and other people have actually seen her. As soon as they go to confront her, she just runs off. The next one is about the show Ghost Whisper. So this isn't a movie, it's the one with Jennifer Love Hewitt. So she actually experienced lots of things that happened. Is my phone ringing? No. She actually experienced lots of paranormal things that happened on set. One, lights would constantly move and a lot of times they would actually completely blow up. There would be shards of glass all over the place that would have to be cleaned up. Things would just whirl out of control and I don't know what that means. I read it and everybody, every time that I read it, it just said whirl. So I don't know if that means like, like wind would come in and like blow papers around or if they're saying things would spin. I don't know what whirl out of control means, but apparently they would. Set props would move or would just completely disappear. One time Jennifer Love Hewitt was filming a scene and the cast looked behind her and it looked like something was moving behind her shoulder. When they went ahead and looked back at the footage, they actually saw a ghost in the video. A lot of times people um, have the feeling that someone's pulling on their shirt or their pants and they caught more than that activity on camera as well. And it got so bad that there was rumors going around Hollywood that it was so haunted that they were having an issue getting guest stars to come and be on the uh, show. The next one we're gonna talk about is The Exorcist, which is a gory, creepy, scary movie. Love the movie, love horror movies in general, but that one, that one's pretty creepy. So they think that this is actually haunted by a real demon. They don't even think it's a ghost. They're like, this is a demon, 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and what in the world? Why is there always people walking by my house? Ugh. So filming was delayed due to, um, it was delayed due to a giant fire that engulfed the whole set except for Reagan's room. And I think that's just kind of creepy how her room was the only room that was like unburned. During filming, the actress who plays who played Reagan's mom, Ellen Bernstein, was filming the scene where Reagan more or less like picks her up and throws her and her harness broke and they decided to just keep that part of the movie so when you watch the part where she picks her mom up and throws her that scream and that fall were real that really happened that's not special effects that's not acting nine cast and crew total died after being associated with that movie two of them even two of them even died before the release date and then cast and crew even had things happening to them after the filming was all done and the movie had been released. And then when the movie was released in Rome, there was a 400 year old cross on the top of a church down the street and it was struck by lightning. That to me is just creepy as hell. The next movie we're gonna talk about is Poltergeist. Now, I just mentioned a little bit about Poltergeist, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about the whole movie this time. This is a Steven Spielberg movie. And um, that part where you see all of those skeletons in the mud, those were real skeletons because apparently real skeletons were cheaper than plastic skeletons. Now, can we just take a second and wonder why real life body parts are cheaper than plastic? Like that's concerning, I'm sorry. That is a little, it's a little upsetting. 
I don't know how you feel about it, but that bothers me a lot. Like, oh, I can totally go get some human bones and that's gonna be cheaper than the fake ones. Mm. A couple months after the release, Dominic Dunn was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. As soon as, it, as soon as it was time to film the second movie, a bunch of the actresses had a bunch of weird things that happened to them. There was an actual exorcism that happened on set, not to a person, but they tried to exorcise any evil demons that were on set because this was also um, the set 19 at Paramount Pictures. So that had an exorcism happen. Julian Beck, who played Kane, ended up dying of stomach cancer a couple months after the release of the second movie. And Heather O'Rolick, who played the little girl, ended up at 12 years old dying of cardiac arrest. Cast member Richard Lawson was in a plane crash in 1992 and he barely escaped with his life. And Lou Perryman from the original Guys was murdered by an ex-con with an axe. And the last movie that we are going to talk about is The Omen. And this is going to be the original Omen, not the remake with Julia Stiles. So in 1976, while they were filming on set, animals would suddenly go crazy on their trainers. Dogs were attacking their trainers constantly. The baboon scene was actually filmed at a wild animal park and the next day one of the zookeepers was eaten alive and I don't know by what. Um, there were multiple occasions of a faulty cameras stop like not working. They would flash error message 666 but the creepy thing about that is there's no error mes message that is 666 so how did it say that? A stuntman was actually injured on set after something mysteriously pushed him, but there was no one there. Multiple crew members were struck by lightning in two separate planes on two separate occasions. And this, I think, is one of the creepiest things that could freaking happen. Oh my god. So on Friday the 13th, John Richardson, the set designer who was in charge of doing the decapitation scene in The Omen, was in a head-on collision with his assistant in the car. His assistant was sliced in half just like the, the decapitation scene in The Omen. And on top of that, on top of that, this happened near a sign that said Omen City 6.66 kilometers away. Fuck that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a like, subscribe. If you want to see more spooky stories, I'm still going to be making them until the end of October, and then I'll go back to my regular recording schedule. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching. Bye.